Hello everyone and welcome back to another music class. Today we will head on to uh, where we left off uh, the last time and that is in the last class we learned all the basics that, uh, that has to be learned and so uh, we stopped at node values and rest values and everything about the node, the lines and the spaces. So today uh, as we have learned with the nodes and how to use them and um, rests and how to use them. Today, like I said, we will learn about the time signature. We will learn about the time signature and we will actually in real learn about the real values of the time when the time signature changes. So when I say the word time signature, it means that it means the two numbers. When I say time signature, it says time, right? And it says signature, which means it's a time Okay, it's a time at the beginning of a music and it comes as a sign, right? It tells us what to do and how to sing and uh, the tempo of the song and also we call it as a signature because it shows us the sign of how to do it. So, uh, the most common thing that we know of, the most common thing that we know of the time signature is this. I think we've, we're all familiar with this, this is 4-4. Four, four. So, um, um, being a Christian state, we all go to church and when we go to church, we take a, a church hymn book with us and there we sing, and from there we sing a song, right? We sing songs and all in church and where it is written in those, uh, in those various uh, stuffs and all and there is a number. There is always a number at the beginning of every song, all right? There is always these two numbers, even if the number changes, okay? Even if the number changes, say, for example, it, is, it changes to 4, 6 or 3, 8 or let the number change. Okay, let the number change. But whenever you open uh, your songbook to sing a song, there is always a number. Okay, so that is our time signature. And our time signature tells us which note to sing uh, for how long. Okay, our time signature always tells us the number of beats. So uh, I will rub up this one and uh, we'll try to look at the meaning of the time signature differently with different numbers. So the first thing is, we'll just take an example with 4-4 four, four because it is one of the most widely used time signature. So here is our 4-4. Four, four. This is our 4-4. Four, four. So, this and this together we call it as a time signature not just the upper number or not just the lower number together four and four okay the number this, these two numbers that we see at the beginning together we call them as the time signature and these two numbers are one of the are one of the most important numbers or one of the most important signs when it comes to music because even if you have all those uh, lines and spaces notes and whatnot if you do not have a time because time is rhythm. So if there is no rhythm, there is no time. If there is no time, there is no song. All right? Uh, we need every, um, a little bit of everything to compose a song, but then without time, there is nothing else. So uh, we can say this is, the most, this is one of the most important signs when it comes to music. So we'll try to learn about them differently now. So this is, in, uh, as in whole, we call this as... I'll write uh, S I G N S for now. You cannot write this in your exam or anywhere. It has to be signature. But since there is no space, I'm writing it as S I G N. So we call these two together as time signature. Now, the upper number has its own role and the lower number has its own role. All right? The upper number has its own role. The lower number has its own uh, own role. Um, there are some textual explanations to this, but I'll try to make it very uh, simple so as you will um, be able to understand it very easily. So. The first one, the upper number, the, the upper number, the importance of upper number is it tells us, okay, it tells us, now we'll come back to the lines and the spaces again. So there is, this is, like I said in the last class, this is one bar or one measure. We call this as one bar or one measure. So uh, the upper number tells us, okay, 
uh, let it be one, two, three, four, or hundred, whatever the number might be. The upper number is always telling us the number of beats there should be in one bar or one measure. As simple as that, okay? Uh, the upper number is telling us that there should be four, five, six counts, okay? If there is four number, uh, if it is written four here, there should be four counts within these two bars, within one bar or one measure. If there is five, there has to be five. If there is six, there has to be six. Even if there is unlimited, if, even if there is 100, 1000, 10,000, you have to follow the pattern. Because that is what the time signature is telling you. Okay, there is no such number as 1000, 10,000. But then, just an example. Even if the question, even if the uh, number is tens, uh, uh, ones or tens of thousands, you would have to have that much number of counts between these two bars because that is what your time signature tells you. Okay, the upper number. So the, uh, the role of upper number is So, this is the definition for the upper number, okay? Like I said, different numbers, they have different roles to play when it comes to uh, the time signature. So, the upper number, the upper number tells us the number of beats in a measure. In very simple term or in very simple uh, definition, okay? The upper number tells us the number of beats in a measure, meaning, okay, whatever the number, uh, number might be, you will have to follow the pattern and even if it's uh, like I said one two three four five six whatever the number might be there should be that much count between these two bars okay now here we have four right so which means there should be four counts between these two so you can draw this is four count right like we've learned this is four count right so if you're drawing a whole knot there should be only one whole knot because it is four counts and that is completed now if we are drawing a half note, a minimum, okay, it should be two minims because it is two counts, two counts. Now two plus two, that's four. So four counts, okay. If you draw one more, it'll be extra because it'll be six, right? So two minims makes, makes up four counts and that is how four counts comes out. Now that'll be complete. Now when it comes to a crochet, now, one count note, okay? One, two, three, and four. See, the number is four and so, one, two, three, and four. All right, let the number change, okay? Let the number change from one to no matter what, okay? Infinite, okay? Let it change to whatever it wants to change, but you have to always draw the required number of beats that the upper number tells you, okay? Within these two bars. So that is the role of your upper number. Now the lower number. So uh, the thing that I've written here, you can pause the video and you can copy this down. Now we we'll learn the value of this lower number. We've covered the portion for the upper number. Now we we'll learn the value for the lower number. Now the lower number is totally contrary, totally opposite to how to what the uh, upper number does. For the upper number tells us the upper number tells us to uh, write this much numbers number of beats right write uh, five counts in each bar six counts in each bar uh, nine counts ten counts eleven counts in each bar but as for the lower number when the lower number changes the value of not will change okay when the lower number changes the value of not will change because the lower number shows the type of beat uh, the note gets in a bar, okay? The type, let's say, uh, let's say here we have, all right, we'll just try to do it from a simpler point of view because uh, the one that's in your textbook is rather hard. So uh, uh, the bottom number shows the type of beat in a bar, okay? Shows the type of beat. It says, shows the type, right? So, uh, which means, the role of lower number is is to tell us now we know this as four counts and two counts right now we know this as four counts and two counts so this is what this lower number four is telling us okay if the lower number is four 
whole note will always be uh, four count this will be two counts okay so the lower number for the lower number for the lower number it just shows the bottom number shows the type of beat in a bar so what the lower number does is it tells us that whole note gets this much count half note gets this much count okay in in a very simple in a very simple uh, term I'm, I'm trying to make you understand in a very simple term so the lower number what the lower number does is it tells us that uh, this note has four counts we know right this note has four counts why because the lower number is telling us that it has four counts not because it has four counts not because this is four since this is four this one will get four not like that okay not like that since when the lower number is four whole note will always be four counts that is what the lower number is uh, the lower number shows us okay so the bottom number shows the type of beat in the bar So uh, that is uh, the definition, the, the role of your lower number. Okay, the bottom number shows the type of beat in a bar. Because we have three types of lower numbers, okay? We'll be learning that now. But then uh, we have three types of lower number. That is two, four, and six, okay? We have, uh, sorry, two, four, and eight. We have two, four, and eight. When it comes to lower number, we have only two, four, and eight. All right. For the upper number, the most the most common ones are. For the upper number, the most common ones are two to twelve. Okay. The most upper number, the most common number upper numbers are two to twelve. Okay. You will get it between two and twelve. All right. Uh, let's uh, go through that once again. The most common number for upper number okay for the upper number is 2 to 12 and the most common for uh, the ones that you'll be learning the ones that you'll be learning about the lower numbers are 2 4 and 8 only only these three okay so uh, for upper number 2 to 12 for lower number 2 4 and 8 so when the lower number changes this one being 4 will not will not be 4 again okay this one being uh, uh, the two count note will not will, will change its value because the lower number is changing. So you have you have to always keep this in mind. Uh, before that, you I want you to pause the video and write this one the definition. So uh, about the lower number again, when the lower number changes, it changes the value of notes. Okay, you have to understand that uh, when the upper number changes. Okay. The upper number changes from 2 to 12, right? Like I said, the most common ones. Since, so when it changes from 2 to 12, all, the, uh, all that the upper number is doing is telling us there should be this much count in one bar or one measure. That is all the upper number is doing. Okay. The, even if the upper number changes from 2 to 12 or whatever the number might be, you're only going to include that much count in one bar. But you have to get worried. Okay. You have to ask yourself, uh, ask yourself questions when the lower number changes okay when the lower number changes because when the lower number changes it changes the value of the knots and rests okay it changes the value of the knots and the rests and how okay that is the role of your lower number okay it changes the value of the uh, the value of the knots and the rests okay because it shows us the type of beat in a bar right it tells us which note gets how many counts uh, depending on what the no lower number is, right? So which means it changes the value of notes. So now, we'll make it very simple, okay? This is what we learned, okay? This is what we learned. 
This is something that we have already learned. Uh, so I'll first use this one. All right. We have learned this in our previous class. If you have not seen our previous video, I want you to go back to uh, the video link and then uh, see it for yourself. So we have learned this in our previous class. Whole note gets four count, half note gets two count, crochet one, eight note half. Okay. So this is the first thing that we learned about in music class, right? But that is because. We'll come back to newer time signatures as of now, like I said, it's just the revision of what we have learned in the previous years, okay, in class 9 and 10, and that is why we're using only four time signatures as of now, okay. Now, you take a look at the time signature and try to find out what is the common thing about them. So, yeah, if you haven't found out, the common thing about them is their lower numbers, right? All of them have, have uh, has an, uh, the lower number. Four, 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 four. Okay. So, like I said, when the lower number is four, okay, when the lower number is four, your whole note will be four, your uh, minimum will be two, this one, one, this one, half. Okay. So, let, like I said, let the upper number change. Okay. The upper number is changing from three, four, two, six, right? Four, three, two, six. See, it's changing, but it doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter because it is not changing the value of notes, right? But when the lower number changes, it'll change the value of note. What the upper number is doing is it is telling us to draw this much notes in one bar. All right. I'm going back to it again and again, but I want you to get this into your head. So I'm repeating this again and again. So uh, when the lower number is four, okay, when the lower number is four, your note values will always be like this. Okay. Four, two, one and half. Okay. Only when the lower number is four. Now, we'll learn about this is uh, when the uh, time in time signature when the lower number is four. Okay, we call this as this time signatures as common time signature. Okay, common time signature. Why? Because this is one of the most commonly used time signatures. The lower number being four, we use this one as one of the most common time signatures, and that is why we call this as common time signature. Okay, this one, four four common time signature. Okay, or all in all, if you do not understand it, you can take all in all, all this as a common time signature because these are one of the most widely used time signatures. Now we'll try to learn about, like I said, we have three numbers when it comes to lower number. Now we have learned about four. So uh, we'll take these three numbers as four, uh, we'll take the lower number four as the middle one, okay? The middle one, the one that's in the middle, that the one that's not too high or too less, the one that's in the exact middle. Okay, so we'll try to take it as uh, the one that's in the middle. Okay, now we'll uh, we'll first learn about the lower one. So now we'll learn about. Now we'll learn about two two three two four two. All right. Now we'll learn about 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2. So what is it that has changed from here to here? See, our 2, 3, and 4. 2, 3, and 4. It's still the same. But what is that one thing that, that has changed? The one thing that has changed from here to here is your lo lower number, right? It's our lower number that has changed from 4 to 2. So uh, basically, if we do maths, 2 is the half of 4, right? 2 is the half of 4, right? So which means, uh, uh, if you find it very hard to um, calculate the value of notes, okay? Sometimes, uh, for some of you, you will find it very hard when uh, time signature changes and when you, are, when you have to find out the value of notes, okay? You, I know you will find it hard. So, like I said, this is the middle one, the most common time signatures, okay? The common time signatures, 4, 2, 1, half, right? Whole note 4, half note 2, uh, 
quarter note one, eight note half. This is something that we have learned. Okay, from the first time we came into music class, this is something that we learned. But now, since the lower number changed, right? From four, it came down to two. It it went down. Uh, it was four. Now it came down to two. You think of it like that, okay? It was at first. It was first. Now it came down to two. So what should I do? Okay. Now we'll draw the same notes. Now we'll uh, draw the same notes. Okay. Whole note, uh, half note, quarter. But now their values has changed. And why? Why their values has changed suddenly? Like I said, since the lower number has changed. Okay. When the lower number changes, it will always change the value of notes. And that is why the value of these notes are going to change. At first it was 4. Now, whole note will be 2. Okay. When the lower number is 2, when the, when, when the time, signature, uh, time signature changes and the lower number changes to 2, your whole note will be 2 count. Okay. And you can consider this as, at first it was 4. Okay. You can consider, uh, forget about force, just take the half, half, half of this and bring it down here, okay? When the lower number is 2, it's 2 is smaller than 4, right? 2 is smaller than 4, which means it, it went smaller, the t since the time signature went smaller, the value of notes will also get smaller. You should think of it that way, okay? Since the time signature, since it went from 4 to 2, now I think the value of notes should also go from 4 to it's halves, okay? You should think of it that way, okay? So, at first it was 4. Now it came down to 2. Now, this was 2 count, right? This was 2 counts. Now, it will come down to 1, okay? Now, this was 1 count. It will come down to half. And we have one more. At first, this was half. Now, it will be... 1 by 4. Alright. The value of not changed from 4 to 1 half to 2 1 half 1 by 4. Why? You can, um, like I said, it will be very hard for you, for some of you, uh, the, the new students. So, I want you to take it, uh, take, take it this way. Let this be the middle one. Okay, when the lower number is 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, when the lower number is 4, always take this one as the middle one and take this one as the thing that you learned first when you came to music class and this is how the value of note actually is. Okay, but when the lower number changed to 2, it went down to 2. Okay, went down to 2 and that is why the value of note is also going down to its halves. Okay, and that is how it came down to their halves, from 4 to 2, from 2 to 1, from 1 to half, from half to 1 by 4. Now, we'll learn about another one. Now we've learned about 2 and 4s. So, now we'll learn about the lower number. Like I said, there is only 3, which means we have the last one that is 8. Now, we will learn about when the lower number is 8. Okay, same formula applies here. Same formula applies here, and so we will try to learn about that. Now, the lower number has changed to 3, 8, 8, 8. Okay, now see. Uh, at first, this was mainly compri uh, comprised of 2, 4, 4, 2, 6. It was, uh, let's say, uh, an even number, but uh, something that we can make an addition of very easily. But now here, the upper number has also changed. 3, 6, 9, 12. 9 and 12, very uh, unusual. We don't see that often. We have not learned about that yet. Uh, I'll come back to that. But now, what you have to know is the lower number has changed to 8, 8, 8, 8. So, which means... Since the value, uh, since the lower number has changed, the value of notes will also change, right? Like I said, this is the middle one. Now we'll draw the value of notes. So, 
So the f uh, formula for the first one was, at first it was 4, it went down to 2, and so since it went down, the value of also, uh, the value of nodes also went down, right, to its halves. Now you apply the same thing here, okay, you apply the same thing here, but at first we did subtraction, now you do addition, since it's going up, okay. Now you do addition while when the lower number changed to 8. Now at first, 2 is when you minus 2 from 4, it's 2, right? 2 is the half of 4. Now, 2 is the double, I mean, 8 is the double of 4, which means, what should we do? Uh, we should always think of it as, since the lower number has doubled, the value of naught should also be doubled, okay? In a very simple term, okay? In a very simple way, since the value of naught has risen from 4 to 8, let's make the knots that was, at first, that was 4, 2, 1, and, a, uh, and half, let's make it as double. So what is the double of 4? The double of 4 is 8. At first it was only 4 counts when the lower number was 4. But since the lower number has changed from 4 to 8, now what, uh, what was earlier a 4 now has become an 8. Now uh, it's 2 here, it's 2 count here, minimum. Now we'll change from 2 to 4. Since the value, uh, since the time signature changed from 4 to 8, 2 became 4, double. Now this was 1, a crochet, the, your crochet knot was 1, now it will become 2. This was half, now it will become 1. Okay, so in a very simple, in a very simple way, I'll do the explanation for all of them together for the last time. So let's take this one, okay, let's take the lower number 4 as the most middle time signature, the most common time signatures, okay. And we'll consider four count, two count, one count, and half count as the most common ones. And when it goes down or when it comes up, you can call this as, we call this as cut time, okay. Cut time, why, why? because we're cutting half of the value of nodes here, right? We're cutting the value of nodes here and making them as two, one, half, and one by four, all right? Cut time because value of nodes has been cut down to half. And when the lower number changes to a higher one, we call this as addition, okay? An addition time because it's an addition, right? From 4 plus 4, it's 8. 2 plus 2, it's 4. 1 plus 1, 2. Half plus half, it's 1. Okay? Cut time, addition, the most common time, okay? Not the most. Let's say just the common time, okay? Common time, cut time, and that is your addition time, okay? So, uh, if you have, uh, if you still have uh, questions and if you're still confused, I want you to uh, replay the video, replay the video, go back to the time where you found it very uh, hard to understand, go back to it and then uh, try to uh, go through it until and unless you are able to understand it very clearly. All right, since uh, after we're done with this, we'll not be uh, uh, doing uh, this chapter again and again because now uh, we have it uploaded on YouTube, we have it uploaded on the social media so I think we'll, you will make the best use of uh, the, thing that, the things that we have the, uh, on, on the internet so I want you guys to look at it, go through it again and again until and unless you're able to memorize it or able to understand the methods very nicely. So that'll be all for today and uh, I'll see you again in the next class. And I want you to be prepared as well for the next class. So I'll let you know about what we're going to learn in the next class. So in the next class, we'll learn about the key signatures. All right, the key signatures and scales. I want you to um, go to uh, YouTube or maybe on Google and then search about this particular topic and go through it yourself so that when you come back to the video, you will not uh, be uh, confused about what we are going through here. So I hope you have understood a little bit about what we went through now. So um, I wish you all the best and have a good day.